Good morning, Dirk. How are you? And, and welcome, everyone. Um, we've got a really exciting case uh, today. Uh, again, uh, the team from yesterday is the same, but we have Marichu, Ashley, and Elizabeth as our nurses, and Damien as our tech, and the same team here. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Dr. Majid to present this really uh, cool case. Uh, good morning, everybody. So um, this is a 68-year-old uh, male with a history of diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, and coronary artery disease. The patient has an extensive history of PAD and has had a right SFA, popliteal, AT, and PT intervention in the past, also has a history of tobacco use. Recently, the patient has been having worsening uh, one-block lifestyle limiting left lower extremity claudication for the last few weeks, Rutherford grade 1, category 3, Fontaine 2B. Uh, he denied, denies any rest pain or any ischemic ulcers. Next slide. As you can see, his past medical history is significant for his risk factors, diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia. In March of 2017, he underwent an extensive revascularization of his right lower extremity with a SFA and popliteal a directional atherectomy and DCB intervention and below the knee uh, AT and PT intervention as well. Next slide. Uh, he is on appropriate medications, including aspirin, celostazole, uh, he is, uh, um, he's on his statin as well as his beta blocker and diabetes medications. Does have an extensive history of smoking in the past. Next slide. Uh, on his extremity exam, his uh, left lower extremity shows one plus DP and PT pulses. His right lower extremity has two plus and normal pulses. You can see he's a little bit anemic and otherwise his labs are all within normal limits. His ABIs reveal a right ABI of 0.94 and a left ABI of 0.55, which is severely diminished. Uh, here is his previous angiogram, and as you can see here, the SFA is heavily calcified in the proximal, mid, and distal segments, uh, with severe stenosis noted in all, uh, all of the uh, segments of the SFA. There is some uh, moderate disease in the popliteal, uh, and then the patient does have a good runoff uh, it, below the knee. Um, here you can see that the AT, PT, and uh, peronia are uh, open in this, uh, in this angiogram. Next slide. So in summary, this is a 68-year-old male with a history of diabetes, hypertension, hyperlipidemia, along with extensive uh, PAD history, who now presents with left lower extremity claudication and abnormal left ABI of 0 0.55. Peripheral angiogram reveals a heavily calcified proximal, mid, and distal left SFA, and the plan is to perform left <coughs> SFA intervention today. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. I just want to go over the angiograms that Dr. Uh, Kapoor, uh, myself, and Dr. Guja just did. I just want to show you the initial shot of the SFA without any, um, any, any dye at all, and you can see these popcorn-type eruptions that are all over the place, Dirk, um, and to the panel as well. Took a little picture here showing you all the way down. He has re restless leg. So please bear with us, as you'll see, he'll move quite a bit. Uh, but uh, he's been very cooperative to us. So with this kind of lesion, uh, you know, our, our plan was really, you know, how do we deal with this? Um, you know, this is a reality, as you know, in Leipzig, you guys have uh, taught us so much on how to deal with this kind of stuff. So we wanted to demonstrate uh, what we would do. So I just wanted to just go kick it to the panel and see how they'd handle this. But let me just show you the angiograms as well. So you can see here, when you do a, a digital subtraction imaging, he has that proximal eruption there, followed by that middle, really obstructive calcium within the vessel. Uh, then if you go mid-distal uh, to the SFA or, or the, uh, just above the adductor canal or at the adductor canal, you have three other popcorn-type eruptions. And then you can see as you get even lower down, you have almost a, a, a total occlusion there with full um, uh, a calcification of the lumen there. But, but interestingly, you know, just to keep all options open, he has a, a patent anterior tibial artery, um, as you can see there, excuse me, a patent perineal artery, it looks like, and, and a patent posterior tibial artery. And then down into the foot, if I recall right, I think the perineal gives rise to the dorsalis pedis. Yes, it does. So, so he, he has a, you know, a diminutive AT. So now with this kind of challenge, uh, you know, we were just wondering, I mean, I know we have our plan, but uh, before I reveal that, I just wanted to ask the panel what they would do and yourself as well. So uh, no question, a very uh, challenging case, extreme calcification, probably beyond uh, any doubt, you know, if you we, if we speak about different classifications for calcification, this is really m maximum uh, extreme. Um, so, uh, uh, I mean, what are the possible approaches? Brian, do you have an idea? Yeah, 
I, I think the, the first thing for a patient like this is uh, this type of case reminds you that uh, SFA interventions for clodicans are not without complications. Those popcorn type uh, pieces of plaque within the SFA are, are at certain, uh, certainly at risk of embolization. So um, before even beginning an intervention, I'd want to make sure that we've done our exercise program and done our due diligence with medical therapy. Um, once we're trying to approach this type of case, I think I'd have a low threshold for uh, using an embolic protection device of some sort. Um, uh, oftentimes you find that what looks like very uh, heavily calcified disease inside the SFA has a soft core, and sometimes you can do atherectomy to clean out some of those, those that popcorn appearance. But more often than not, these type of cases uh, they tend to use uh, something like a supera stent that has, has the, the, the crush resistance to handle this kind of heavy calcification. Chris? Yeah, I agree with a lot of Brian's comments. I, I think for sure you need distal embolic protection. You've got two vessel runoff, and I think even the posterior tibial had a discrete lesion at the osseum. So I would for sure use distal embolic protection. I think this is a pretty good case. It's a large vessel, lots of calcium. So I would think about an atherectomy device that deals with calcium in longer lesions like this, and I would think of a jet stream would actually do pretty well with this, with embolic protection followed by balloon and then spot, uh, stenting with Sapera I mean, yeah. would be reasonable. So I think to be very clear, I mean, if we look at different type of cases, so this is really the type of, of SFA disease which requires more than anything else a mechanical solution. I mean, yesterday we were talking a lot about drug illusion and so on. I think this is uh, of uh, probably secondary importance here. I mean, I, I clearly mm -hmm. here, uh, this is a big mechanical challenge. I think vessel preparation, how, however that can be achieved, uh, I think is, is going to be key for whatever you, you, mm -hmm. you want to follow up that with. So, so PK. So Dirk, uh, I mean, it's amazing. I'm so glad that uh, we were thinking along the same lines. Uh, so when we discussed this case, not only you and me, but when the team discussed this case, we decided to go ahead and did it, do exactly what Brian and, um, and Chris had suggested. So again, obviously good runoffs to the foot. Then what we did was we wanted to check our filter placement so it was actually, as you can imagine, a little challenging to cross, but we did it with an 014 field of wire, really navigating through the popcorn and really pushing a catheter down, which wasn't a big deal at all, and I don't think it was worth really sinning. Uh, but once we did that, we were able to get an get Abbott um, uh, filter down, which is the, um, the EmboShield, which is, again, off-label for peripheral arterial disease, but clearly um, a filter that, that, that has a large capacity and is able to capture this. And, and our, our go-to here was a, was a jet stream uh, atherectomy. In our hands, we've had tremendous success with that particular atherectomy device. And, uh, and so we did some of it offline and, uh, because of the fact that it was so diffuse. So we started to do atherectomy here, uh, blades down. So and I think it's important here, what we did was we did blades down and we started pecking the lesion. As uh, those of you who don't know the jet stream atherectomy, I want you to just focus on here. It's, it's a nice device. Uh, it's, it's, it's an over-the-wire device. It has this loop tail where you can actually loop the wire and attach it to the device, which prevents the wire from retracting as, as, as you go down, as you can see here. The second thing is you need an assistant to hold this and, uh, and have a little bit of redundancy, though not too much redundancy, as you peck forward um, and, and are doing it. So right here, we're, we're blades down proximally, and I want to show you this. And the next thing you know is, oops, he moved again, excuse me. And then now we're blades up as we're going down. And you can see the blades. I don't know how it's going to show you. I'll show you now. So we're going to go distally here, and we're going to go ahead and start doing some jet stream atherectomy. Again, again you know that, that there is distal embolic protection um, uh, in place. So, so he did embolize. Let me show you what, what he did do. So he did embolize down. We had very poor flow. So what we decided to do, we couldn't cross that area. Let me show you now. Um, me go down. So when we injected, he had very, very poor flow, as you'll see, hopefully, if he doesn't move. So he has very poor flow. And this is important, because when you start seeing a change in flow, uh, you know that you have embolism going distally. So what we did was we took the penumbra device, which we'll show. I don't know if uh, the factoid gentleman can show the penumbra. You can see that the penumbra device, we couldn't get, get it through the calcium, so we put an 035 wire down, and then we're able to get the penumbra all the way distal, and again, because of his restless leg, he's moving, turned on the penumbra device, and then took it all the way down to the, uh, to the filter, aspirated, and then injected, and now uh, we have very good flow. So I think it's important periodically, even though as slow as you go, um, you do not sit there and just do a long run of any sort of atherectomy in this type of calcium, in our opinion. So while you guys uh, talk, we're just going to get started with this 
atherectomy here. I'm going to show blades up, please. Okay, go. So just very little pecking. You're going to hear deceleration and acceleration. The nice thing about, about the jet stream atherectomy is that, is that it's going to do differential cutting. And the differential cutting is going to allow you uh, not to worry about cutting the normal tissue. I, I know the inventor of this device, uh, yes, thank you, uh, and, and he actually used to put it to his tongue and turn it on. Go ahead, hit it again. Uh, and, and, you know, so it's really tremendous. Right here. Yep, blades up. Mm -hmm. And you can see the blades up here, right there. Here a little bit of deceleration. And you, there you go, another side here. So we've obviously made a couple of passes with this device offline for the sake of time because we know how long these can take. And the whole thing here is to limit the runs as much as possible to about 10 seconds. I do want the audience to know that he's not in pain. Uh, the whole thing is because he does have restless leg. So PK, maybe uh, just for the uh, to 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 uh, uh, explain your strategy again. I mean, what is the re the objective you want to achieve with the atherectomy? Is that uh, you want to uh, uh, maximize lu luminal gain, or is it more that you remove the uh, let's say the extensive of calcification uh, and uh, try to make the artery then more dilatable? Because I think it's probably hard to imagine that uh, with the device you can really remove. Um, um, let's say uh, a, a lot of the calcium. I mean, you can probably remove the caps, but you probably cannot take out uh, uh, everything. Well, you know, you know, Dirk, what you said is absolutely true. The strategy with atherectomy, at least in our hands, is really to actually make this uh, lesion more uh, dilatable. Um, under honestly, lower high pressures doesn't matter. I know that this is not going to be a definitive therapy for what we're going to do. Um, my idea here is to try to either, either put a scaffold, a mechanical scaffold, or drug uh, if, if that's part of the discussion what we want to have. So right now, I know for sure if we had tried to go with a large, large bore balloon like a, a six millimeter or a five millimeter balloon, we would not be able to go. But you will see here, once this comes out, we're going to go with an 018501150 balloon and dilate this. And I think you're going to see it expand as remarkably well after which we'll take a picture. But again, we're fully expecting emboli to be in the filter even now, uh, even though we've aspirated it once. But my question to you also is, what is the end game here? I mean, is there, is there a role for drug-coated technology in these cases, or is, is, is it a supera technology, something that, you, that you've shown very well at, at Leipzig with your data? So I, you know, it, this is one of the things we worry about. Obviously, this is not a, a younger gentleman like the one yesterday where we wanted the spot stent. This is an older gentleman. I think we'll, we'll have good patency, uh, regardless of uh, whether we use a supera that's a longer length or not, based on the, on, on the data that you have. So to me, I think that the role of the, the atherectomy is to prep the vessel to make it easier to give him the definitive therapy. So yeah. we're just going to go ahead and go with a 50150 while you guys advise us on, on what to do. So maybe, no, no, no picture. maybe it's a good question for Thomas. I mean, uh, is that to you uh, a, a clear superior case, or would you think about any combined therapy using uh, drug solution here? Well, basically, the good news here is uh, it's a pretty big vessel. So um, you have all the options. You can, you can uh, go for a drug-coated balloon approach after vessel preparation with a big uh, balloon, six or even seven millimeter, or if you um, are more likely to, to um, use a stent, then the supera stent in a, in a dimension of six or seven millimeter would be an option and would work very well. Uh, both options, in my opinion, would result in a longer lasting uh, outcome with regard to patency. Oops. But uh, preferentially, I, I would also use a supera stent in particular in the a conjunction area from the SFA into the popliteal artery here. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're still trying to understand okay. where, okay. where to use DCBs when we have these heavily calcified um, lesions. And I, I think that, in, in my experience, the, the most effective use of DCBs have been in very soft lesions without a lot of calcium, um, whereas lesions that look calcified from SFA origin down to the popliteal I tend to go more quickly to using uh, Supera alone. 
there are lesions in between where we have stretches of calcium and stretches of, of softer tissue, which is probably more biologically active. And, and those are areas that we're exploring with, with studies like the reality trial to try to answer that question as, in terms of when to pair some yeah. of these new modalities we have. So I don't know if you guys saw that, that napkin type ring uh, open at the end as we were, as we were going up. And, uh, you know, surprisingly, we went up to six and seven atmospheres, which is not minimal, but clearly not 15 or 20. And this is not a, a heavy-duty, high-pressure balloon here. So this one, uh, you know, is a, is a 018 Power Cross, which is a balloon uh, that we use quite often in the lab, very trackable. And you can see here that, again, Dr. Kapoor is going up to about six, eight, ten. I think the, the idea here is that it, it, uh, the, the nice thing about the jet stream is that it allows us not to cut the healthy tissue. I know I was lucky enough to be with Tom when the Jetstream uh, device was first coming out. It was actually the first time I met uh, Tomas in, um, in, uh, in, um, in Germany. And uh, I think the, the fact that it doesn't cut healthy tissue really gives me a lot of confidence in being aggressive to try to modify the plaque. And you can see here, even here, even though the balloon is going up, we are clearly not really affecting one side of the vessel. We're affecting the opposite side, but we're getting a reasonable lumen. So I want to see how it looks once this comes out, which is just one more inflation, and then we'll decide on what you guys think uh, we should do. Was he in pain? Okay, can we give him some blood pressure medication? Thank you. I believe the real value in um, the use of drug-coated balloons in calcified lesions is in smaller arteries, where if you implant simply a bare metal stent, like the Supera stent in a small dimension, Patency is not as good as in bigger arteries. Like here, I believe um, uh, the standalone uh, bare metal stand placement without pre dilatation with a DCB would make, uh, make perfect sense here. And I get the sense, Tomas, that this is a six millimeter vessel. I, would so say you put a six six. Those, I don't think you have the half sizes. We have the now half size, five, five, five six, oh, oh, six, five. No, so a six, oh, or six, five superior even has better patency, I think. Yeah. Show me this one. Yeah, well, in, in Germany or in, in Europe, um, the labeling is different from the U.S. What, what you consider as a 5.5 in the U.S. is a 5.0 in, in Germany. So we are um, using the inner dimension. You are giving the outer dimension. Corner. So um, well, I, I would prepare the vessel here with, aggressively with a 6.5 or 7 millimeter balloon and then uh, use a 6 millimeter or outer dimension 6.5 millimeter superiority. So uh, we're just going to take a picture, and I, one of the things that we've learned is to take it from distal to proximal just to see how the flow is coming down, and we can see the speed of the, the filling through the profunda as well. So here we just, we just went ahead, uh, took out the balloon, and we're just taking a picture. And again, you can see, as you can see, nothing is filling our vessel. So we've got tremendous amount of, um, of debris distally, and you can see here how slow uh, the, uh, the, um, the flow is into the filter. Again, forgive us uh, for the fact that he's moving, but I think it was demonstrated well down there. Uh, so, so, Dirk, what we're going to do is we're going to go back in with the device, and uh, we're going to aspirate once again. And I yeah. think th this is part of um, the reason our, our, our logic, really, and like uh, Chris and Brian mentioned, to use distal protection. Yeah. Well, PK, I think it's a very nice demonstration how important uh, this protection mm -hmm. is in, uh, if you do uh, procedures, specifically atherectomy procedures in highly Corner. calcified lesions. Uh, maybe a question, uh, according to your experience, how, uh, how reliable is the, is the distal protection balloon? Does it uh, protect uh, uh, the vessel in 100% of the cases, or do you still see, sometimes see um, you know, this stabilization uh, going beside the filter sure, or? Uh, you know, the, I've never, I think the key is not to move the filter. And I think if you move the filter, you're, uh, you're clearly going to have ability uh, uh, to embolize. Oops, and we're having a little trouble here. And I think that's going to be part of it. There it goes. Um, and, and so, you know, you have to have a good partner, uh, honestly, with the wire, because you're constantly torquing the penumbra up top. Show me down below, guys. And I just want to check the wire. So if the wire comes up and moves the filter, then I think what happens is, uh, you know, this, this, this will embolize. Show me up again, guys. So you can see here you're having trouble getting it through these uh, calcified lesions. And it's constant torquing of this catheter that allows you to really scoop it down there. 
So now, again, Dr. Gabor is struggling because I'm moving fast, and, and I apologize to him. But clearly, as you come down, you want to have the filter in view. Show me the filter, guys. You want to have the filter in view and make sure that the wire, see, as it, as it comes proximal, you don't want that wire to disrupt the Abbott filter. The beauty of this filter, truthfully, is the fact that it moves independently. Now, if you see here, I don't have enough length. So what I'm going to do is take an 035 super core wire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to track the sheath in proximally into the, into the proximal SFA, which is also going to help us tremendously to get close to this filter. The one thing you have to watch out for is that you don't, uh, by, by mistake, aspirate the filter into your, into your system. So, so that's also very, very important. So I'm just using the SuperCore support to try and, and the filter, uh, excuse me, and the penumbra system as my, my dilator to be able to track the filter closer to the common femoral. So, excuse me, the sheath closer to the common femoral so that I can, show me above now, so I can get closer. I'll show you here. So now we have the system in place and now I've got support and I'm just going to just advance this a wee bit more up to about there. Come back down now, guys. And now if you see it now, uh, Dirk, we're, we're actually a little bit closer to the filter. Now I'm going to separate the wires, make sure I don't pull out the filter wire by mistake, which I have notably done a few times. And, um, and I'm going to go ahead and now turn on the penumbra system. The system itself is phenomenal because it aspirates. But you also have to be very, very careful here because obviously with somebody with a low hemoglobin, you definitely, definitely don't want to aspirate too much. So right here, I'm not even going to go any closer to the filter than that because the filter will migrate. This, uh, this system has tremendous amount of suction associated with it. So you can easily uh, actually aspirate the filter right back into your, into, your, into your system or your penumbra system and then, and then embolize. The other thing you could do, if you're not using the, the Abbott system and if you're using the Spider system, give me some dye, is to go ahead and, and use, uh, use another wire to place it into the filter. And then you could take the system into the filter and thereby you won't disrupt or move this filter. So I'm gonna go ahead now after I did some suctioning and I'm gonna just take a picture to see how this looks. And you can see that filter is full, right? And you see the column of blood. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this on again. Turn it on, guys. And this may be an indication to capture this filter. And you can see now, you'll see how nicely this will now aspirate Okay, very nice, you see that? You see how it's aspirating? And I'm gonna keep aggressively aspirating this as, as we go, and then keep on checking my, 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 my uh, filter by injecting. Turn it off again. So, you know, in these complex lesions, especially with this much atherectomy, you, you really have to take, uh, take a, a care in not to disrupt this filter, and, and uh, the uh, EmboShield really works phenomenal in that. <laughs> Okay. While you're down there with this 035 lumen, one thing you could do if this doesn't clean up is take a, a take 014 wire, second 014 wire, yep. into the basket, aspirate it with something else, an exporter or this system, whatever, into the basket, Turn it on. and then take the filter out, leaving the other wire behind. Then you've got all options open. Turn it on. Uh, another thought. And if you didn't have the number, both. one other thing to mention is the jet stream has that Rex aspiration that you can take it down and bring take, it back. And it sometimes up. that'll help as up. well. So, so, I mean, uh, that's exactly what we wanted to describe with the other filter. But I think what I'm going to do here, the beauty of, again, the Ember Shield is that you don't have to lose this wire. So what we're going to do is we're going to now try to capture this filter uh, with, with the wire. Okay? And I'm still going to see, I'm still going to, what do you get? Yep. I'm still going to go all the way into the filter as much as I can. Don't move, sir. Don't move. Obviously, we don't want this to filter to dislodge, so I'm going to stop there and take one more picture. Sorry to be so uh, nitpicky here. I just want to see how this flow is looking. Give me some Nipride, too, guys. Okay. Prakash, which, Give me uh, some dye. which penumbra catheter is that? This is the, this is the CAT6. <laughs> CAT6, right? Yeah. Right. All right, a little more flow. And there's the posterior tibial lesion, Chris, that you talked about. Turn it on now. And give me some nipride. I'm just going to do a little more suction here. You can see the dye is starting to clear much better. And I'm just going to continue. No, I just don't want to go into the filter yet. I just want to keep uh, aspirating as much as I can. There it is. And it's already coming back. Don't move, sir. Okay, now give me some nipride. 
He kicked you. It's aspirin. Oh. PK, this is Bill. I, I wonder, you, it looks like you may be wedged into that trifurcation, bifurcation area. Oh, if you pull that filter back a little bit, I wonder if you get a little flow, even though it's, I agree, it's very full. So Bill, I think over here what we're doing is just giving nipride to get, I gave 100 of nipride in, and I'm going to just flush it. The other thing that Vishal and, uh, and Dr. Gujar are, are reminding me is to keep on flushing and aspirating the system despite the fact that we're aspirating, Bill, because sometimes you can get a chunk of, chunk of calcium that, that gets attached to this, which, which will then cause uh, uh, the, the system to get clogged, and then what will happen is you'll actually embolize when you <laughs> inject. So I'm just uh, doing aspiration one more time here, and then, and then uh -huh, it's not coming? Yeah. I will. Yep, I will. But I'm just going to take a little picture one more time. Give me the one more die, guys. <coughs> Going to aspirate again to make sure I don't embolize. Much better. So now I think I'm, I'm a little more comfortable capturing this filter. So the beauty is what I'm going to do is capture the filter and then go ahead and uh, hopefully not embolize. Turn it on, guys. There's a lot of stuff in that filter. But you know, the jet stream is a tremendous device, but as all devices, there is risk of embolization, and it's very important for us to, to go ahead and recognize that. So you can see here, I'm gonna use the, uh, the wire, the bare wire to come back, capture the filter, do a partial capture that we learned from Bill and all the guys doing carotid stenting, and then, and then try to just walk this back under suction. So I think I've, caught it, I've captured it nicely, and I'm gonna advance the wire, which is very nice, so this way we don't lose wire position like Chris suggested. And now we're under suction. Follow this back, guys. So we're just under suction. Oop, show me the catheter so we don't lose it. Thank you. So the filter is nicely captured. And we're just coming back under. Keep it on. Coming back under aspiration. And then the proof will be in the pudding in a second. The other thing we've always used in this situation is also Terumo sheets which allow us to be able to open the, uh, uh, the actual, uh, what is it called, stopcock. Okay, walk it out now. And then bleed back at the level of, the, of this as well. Yep. Yeah, you're fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So walk it out. Okay. Mm -hmm. Walk it out. Beautiful. See the filter is caught right here. I don't know why it's stuck here. Oh, it's stuck here. Pull the filter out. It's full. All right. Oh, my goodness. Yep, you got it. Don't pull the wire off. Okay. Let me bleed it out. Get flush forward, guys. Same thing. You want to have a little bit of blood loss, which is not something you like, but making sure there's nothing going on. Yeah, it's good. It's good. Okay. Good. So show them the filter, and let me take a picture of the leg. Low mag now. Can you show me the leg, please? Thank you. Okay. Low mag and DSA. Oh, the filter wire is all the way back, but that's expected. DSA. All right. Show me the tibial vessels, which is what we're concerned with. Okay. Shut her in, please. Okay. Sir, try not to move. Okay. Ready? Inject. And there's your uh, this little wrestles. So I think, you know, it, it, I know we have great flow into the foot, as you saw. Show me above now. And I think it's a combination of medical therapy, low mag now. Sir, don't move, sir. Maybe it's minor at the moment. Okay. And I'm not so worried that the wire didn't migrate. Obviously, it was probably more important at this stage for us not to do this. And here you have your SFA, still not done, but definitely looking a hell of a lot better than it did a few minutes ago. And now I guess the question to you guys is, what, what should I do now? Better flow. Okay. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, that was uh, very, very interesting to see, you know, how this, this protection issue mm -hmm. could be solved. So I think clearly there's still work so ahead, of, uh, ahead of you in terms of vessel preparation here. So, so my impression is that... Uh, uh, well, if you want eventually to implant a superior stent, uh, you still need to do 
more dilatations uh, with uh, uh, probably shorter and, and, and uh, somewhat upsized balloons in, in, in these areas of severe calcification Shoulder to make sure the artery can receive the vessel. Correct. So what we're doing now, Dirk, is just like you said, I'm going to be very ambitious and try to get a Dorado balloon uh, down on an 014 wire. Uh, but we'll see. If it doesn't go, I'm going to have to switch to an 035. But uh, if it does go, I'll be happy. So far, so good. And it's stuck over here just as we thought. So let me show me, show me above. So we're going to have to change this out to a, oh, no, it may go. It may go. Let me see what so, so, PK, uh, I don't know if uh, maybe I can make a suggestion. We still have about five yeah. minutes left for you for this case. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, yeah. I mean, maybe you take a little bit time to prepare the vessel because we would really like to see also the uh, superior implantation then mm -hmm. in more detail. And uh, so maybe we could do a couple of talks, if you agree. And, Absolutely. And then uh, give us a signal that we come back and see some of the implantation live. Yep. That, that, that would be great, Dirk. I think, you know, thank you again for assisting me with this, with, your great, with all of your advice. And I think we will come back to you when we're ready to deploy the Supera. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, perfect. So then, um, at this point, I would like to invite uh, Thomas Seller to come to the Good. podium. So... Well, those are great talks and really are helping us with our, uh, our decisions here, Dirk. But I got to tell you, what we did offline, I don't know if you were able to see it on the side, uh, we, we did balloon angioplasty of the entire thing, like you said, to vessel prep. Uh, so, but, we, but we saw wonderful expansion in the proximal region, region without dissection. So we used drug in the proximal SFA up top where you're looking now. Distally, we ballooned. This is now a 7-0 Dorado. Um, at, uh, what, 20 atmospheres, 18 atmospheres. And you can see you have still have some residual distally and, and, and in the mid-segment. So then what we decided to do was take a, a short uh, 7 -0. Hold on, I'm just showing you other things here. Here's a picture after we balloon with the 7, 7 200. And you can see there's a little, little recoil in the, in the distal, uh, probably the above knee popliteal, as well as above. And then we went ahead, again, just to show the importance of vessel prep, while using Supera, despite the, the, uh, the, uh, the atherectomy uh, jet stream working so well, here you can see there's still a residual, and this is a, a short 20, uh, 70 at, uh, at about 20, 20, 20 atmospheres. So now we decided to go with a 6-0-150 Supera to cover the entire calcified segment. We just started deploying it at the distal so we don't have geographic miss, and then Dr. Guja is just going to go ahead and start deploying it. Floro? So just for all of you who have not deployed the Supera, uh, two things, you have to flush both lumens, uh, very important. And then what you want to do is wipe down the, 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 the shaft very, very well. This is the severely calcified segment. Oh, sir, don't move, sir. And, and what's important is the vessel prep will help you. You can see here the vessel prep is allowing us to deploy very, very smoothly the, uh, the, the Supera. You have to look at the cell configuration. Unfortunately, we don't have a, a model to keep next to you, but I've got all you guys on the panel who know how this is to look. I don't know if you're happy with this. Do you think it's foreshortened a little bit? Or do you think you're OK with this, with this level of calcium for the scaffolding? Um, and the other thing is you want to keep it very high mag so you can actually look at the cell configuration. And finally, in our, in our hands, an 018 wire seems to work better than an 014. So those are our tips. You can see right there is the calcium where we had trouble. But Dr. Guja is working on that. There you go. It's the best you can do. I'm not, give forward pressure. Great. Nice. Any tips from Chris or Brian or, or you, Dirk, or, or Sahil? I, I, you know, I think your deployment looks beautiful. There's a little bit of elongation, predictably, where that chunk of calcium was. But uh, the thing that I tend to look for is a series of dots, a line of dots along the sides. Uh, you don't want it to be one continuous line. That means you're stacked. Uh, but you want to be able to see those individual dots on the side of the stent. And to me, that's a sign of a great deployment. I mean, and Dr. This is, as you know, it's a challenging deployment, and Dr. Guj is doing a phenomenal job. So what we're doing is he's going to use negative pressure on his hands to separate the cells if it gets too close to what Dr. D. Robertus is saying. So you can see here, obviously, Dr. Kapoor is holding the patient's legs because movement is going, to, is going to throw him off. But see how nice the vessel prep has helped. Sir, don't move, sir. I think this is beautiful deployment, and you can see how well it's standing up the calcium immediately out of the box. I mean, that's just a good testimony to the prep uh, and to uh, how well the, it's being deployed. That's perfect right there. 
PK, while he's doing that, a shout out to your team. You know, they, they must have gotten there mighty early to get the patient ready, 7.30, and they've been standing right next to where to the patient is moving the whole time. Uh, you know, just congratulations to your team for being ready so early in the morning. That's fantastic work. I, I think as, as uh, all of us have demonstrated, you know, without our, our, our team, uh, whether it's in Leipzig or, or in Kingsport or here in New York or UCLA, I mean, we, we're, we're only as good as they are. And, and we are very, very fortunate to have a tremendous team here at Sinai. And really, credit goes to all of, all of them for the success we've had. So thank you, guys. So we're just going to walk this out. And for the sake of time, just take one picture, and we'll show you the rest uh, you know, on the side so that, that, that they can do the lectures. Uh, we'll just take you one picture here, walk it out. You pull the wire back? OK, no problem. No problem. Take one shot. DSA? Yeah. We'll just do DSA of the, let's do the runoff and then up top. Yeah, runoff first. Yeah, that's good. Runoff. Ready? Yeah, just from here. Inject. With all the movement, I still think you see two vessels very nicely there. And just one picture of the SFA to demonstrate. Uh, low mag here, guys. Low mag, 48. The last picture here, we're just going to hold his leg. I got it. Okay, I got it, Ashley. Don't worry about it. Thank you. And you can see the supera in that distal area with severe calcium. And you can see how the supera, like Dr. Metzger said, stands up to the lumen so well in the calcium. So I really thank all of you, and thank you for all the support and the great advice during this case. And we'll see you soon. Thank you.